again, I am Brittany again, and this time we are going to talk about A Court of Wings and Ruin, the last one of the Akatar series by Sarah J. Moss, the last one of one of my absolute series of all time, and the last video, at least for the day, this random, spontaneous offload in the aftermath of this glorifyingly be beautiful series. So, so when we leave off in a court of mist and fury, which about 10 minutes ago, I just had a whole like meltdown about. Feyre has just broken, fake broken her bond with Bryson and, and they have to go separate ways and she's basically going to completely unravel the spring court from the inside out by pretending to Tamlin that she's still in love with him and making everybody think that she was actually stolen instead of left, which was kind of, she made it very clear that she left. So I don't know how she managed to fool that many people with that. She's going to take down Iante, the super ridiculously power-hungry, ambitious bitch of a priestess, and try to find out what they're exactly doing with Hybern's forces and stuff. Timlin sold them out to Hybern. And see if she can turn the court on its in on itself. She can go back to the night court, and they can keep thing going with Precious Reason. And she plays Tamlin like a fucking violin, you guys. It is glorious. He is super convinced that she is just so broken up about the whole recent thing that she doesn't want him touching her or anything and that she's still so upset that she can't move on but that she's still the passive and demure stupid little like accessory to him as a wife that he needs for the court and he keeps hiding things from her but she's finding them out on her own and then Lucian, Lucian's like he doesn't really believe it, he believes it to a little bit and he's trying to be her friend again which is like he did a lot of bad things in the second one and I loved him in the first and then I was so mad at him and now now he's, he's making up for a little bit it is like I can almost ex I can accept you again because I was sad but he had his reasons and they come out in here and then he's like you were always a better friend to me than I was to you and it's just like it's true but you recognize it but anyway somehow she manages to convince them that while she is a threat she isn't that much of a threat but then they also turn to have been in her brain you find out that when she's about to leave Tamlin for the whole court around him and tatters up returning to centuries against him and, and then Alice is like yeah you go like I encouraged more to take you when I saw you were in such bad condition when he was keeping you here and it's like you go go home and she's like and I knew that she knew where my home where I meant my home was which is the night court and she's like she's so supportive and she's just such a great person and then she was gonna go to the summer court so she was gonna be safe from the Tamlin's like tattering court and it's just it was wonderful and then the hybrid officials are like yeah man we've been in your brain we know you're you're playing people and you're trying to get away and then she murders them yes Yes, Feyre. And then so she reluctantly takes him along rather than leaving him and they get catch up on their, their way and they're chased by his brothers and they're all on the ice and the ice is going to crack and they're going to die. And then and then Cassian and Asriel show up and they save them and it's like, yes, she's going back to the night court. It was just beautiful. But then also, Feyre's holding her own. She's like, yes, this is the high lady of the night court. This is what she is. And this is what happens to you when you mess with her. And it's, it's just, it's wonderful to be able to see how she's grown and stuff like that. She'll come from the first one and then just like, she was crushed. She was crushed. And this, this is a powerful person. Oh, anyway, and then she goes back to the night court. And Harrison comes out and he basically like tells everybody, get the fuck out so I can have sex with my wife. And it's just like, what the hell? But it's awesome. At the same time, although I would be really, really uncomfortable, but great. <laughs> anyway, and then even when everybody else is like, yeah, you have fun or whatever, you worn out yet, it's just like, oh my god, you guys, I'm dying, I can't, it was just lovely, and I'm cackling to myself at like three in the morning, my family's asleep, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I'm not sorry at all. Nesta and Elaine, Nesta and Elaine, so the evil sisters from the very beginning, finally you have them in Miss Favor's world, you get to see them for the first time and how they're taking it, and let me tell you, they are not taking it well. Poor sweet Elaine, who's like always seeing the positives and thinks everything's good, and she's like, and then she's she's broken. She's like, her, her screws loose. She's on her last leg. She stares out the window and doesn't talk to anybody, and everybody thinks she's going insane. And then Nesta, Nesta is fire, man. She took something or didn't took something. According to this one, she took something from the cauldron because it took something from her, and she's like, I'm not leaving without stealing something back and um whatever it was has made her ridiculously powerful but that steely willed fire like I said that she's got within her state and then got magnified when she turned into a fae and it's just like 
I don't know. I hated Nesta in the beginning of the first one, and now I love her. And then, oh god, she's got something going on with Cassie, and honestly, there's no possible way she doesn't. He's like, he's telling her, like, come train with me or whatever, and she's like, no, I'm not going to, and they keep having this little, not explicitly flirty back and forth, but it's totally a flirty back and forth, and he wants her. But she also likes him, even though she won't admit it to itself. I love it. It's awesome. And then you have Elaine. And poor Lucian. Lucian's willing to do anything. Anything for Elaine. After everything that's happened, especially. And also because they're mates, right? Like, that's what he's going to do. But she wants nothing to do with him. And it's hard, obviously, for them in the whole situation. But it's... It's cool to see, like, the different kind of mating bond. One that's not necessarily built on love from the very beginning because recent and favor you they loved each other before they she found out that they were made it but with elaine she has no idea who lucian is and he's like a, well i'm basically like devoted and obsessed with her but he doesn't know who she is either he's getting all the information from favor and then elaine won't even talk to him so it's really cool to be able to see that second half of it on top of that Moss brings in a bunch of other characters in this one. I liked when Lucian came in. I liked Lucian. And I didn't mind Tamlin. I liked I liked Tamlin in the beginning. I just didn't love him, but I liked him. I didn't necessarily ship him, but I liked him. And Alice I liked, but that was pretty much the those were pretty much the only characters in addition to Feyre and Recent who were in the first one. So you don't really get to connect on that many levels with that many characters. And you're not gonna connect with Amarantha because she's a bitch and everybody hates her. But in the second one you get to meet Amarant and you get to meet more and Azrael and Cassian and then you get to see Tarquin you get to see the summer court and stuff like that so this whole other element of it and then in this one they add even more so you have Cressida Cressida whatever um and you have Varian Varian and Aaron are just and when he comes shows up at the camp to kiss her and then they just walk out of her just staring at it and it's like oh I love them but in this one, you get to not only re-see Tarquin, Cressida, Cressi or whatever, and Varian when they go back to the summer court and they help. And the, which was, okay, you know what? Tarquin, I actually really like you, but you could have forgiven the Blood Ruby when they came to help you. Does that not show you something? But instead he's all like, no, is that why you stole from me? Because you wanted to be friends with me? Because you agree with what I'm saying? And it's like, no, dude, you don't understand. And they actually kind of had to do it because if they hadn't done it, then nobody would be fixing anything with Highburn in the first place because the cauldron is the problem and it's the problem with the book and it's, I don't, whatever. He needs to learn to forgive a little bit, but um, you get to see them again, you get to see them in a different element, but you also get to meet some of the other people from the courts and get to see the other courts in itself. Moss, can you please, can you please transport me there on somebody, um, Illyrian winged hot man and, and take me to the dawn court for a vacation and then we'll go back to the night court and live there the rest of our days because like night. But you get to meet all a bunch of the other, well all the other high lords because then they have that whole high lord meeting, you get to see everybody and it's really cool to see the relationships that everybody has with everybody and then find out the different ages and see what they've been involved with and then oh my god, Tamlin, jeez, at that meeting and he's trying to like diminish Feyre and take about her dignity and is like, there's a, the things that he says, like oh my god, hold on talking about like climaxing and shit to make it feel everybody feel awkward in the middle of the meeting and it's like that is not what you are here for we don't want you here anyway so get out but anyway seeing and getting to see the dynamic between lucian's father and his brother so eris i there's something going on with eris man he can't be as bad as we all think he is because even if we did two more which like it's completely unforgivable and horrible, but he's like, I wouldn't have touched you. I don't, I think I believe him. I kind of trust him. And I don't know, I don't like that I trust him, but I kind of believe him. And then in addition to that, getting to see Vivian, Vivian and Callius, the Winter Court, were phenomenal. They're probably my new favorite people. Those and Mirian and Draken, because... You can think they're in relationships, they have a lot of fun in it, and they call each other out, even even Vivian, because Vivian is not a high lady, she's the wife or a consort, which then becomes problematic because there's not an equivalent balance of power, but Vivian challenges it all the time, and she was left to keep a whole legion together when Callius was stuck onto the mountain, and it was just, they're, they're, they're just so great, there's an extra dynamic of that, and then you get to see, find out later, Miriam and Draken are the same kind of thing, they're in love, they've mated, but they're equals. And they're on par. And it's, it's nice to see because when you go from Tamlin's court and it's like, no, basically you're my 
inferior, and then you get recent with his You Are My High Lady, and you think that that's so rare and so crazy that there's even, which it is, which it is, she's the only high lady to have ever existed, but at the same time you find out that there are other pairs that have equals as well, that aren't just like, you go sit in the corner and look pretty while I deal with the big boys. Anyway, moving on. The only issue I found with this book is that some of the major stuff that happened were the only things that happened, rather than the first one, there was okay, the first, whatever. The second one had there are big instances, but it also had things like Starfall, and it had them going to the inn, and it had running into Lucian and training and stuff. There was extra aspects of it, and sure, this, this one has training, this one has their romantic stuff, and walking around Valeris and stuff like that, such, but it doesn't have that same sort of continuity. When you get to the end, which isn't that far, like I said, after the whole High Lord dinner, oh my god. Oh my god, the close calls, the almost death, the like going in and almost losing wings and almost being stabbed or being skewered and being taken on yourself or then dying and then not dying and coming back and then her having to go to the bone carver and then <gasps> the bone carver is her son, guys. Oh my god, the little boy, the little boy who shows up in the first one, the little black haired boy with blue eyes and you don't think anything of it because it's just an eight year old boy and then she's like, that's, that's recent space and that's my mouth and I'm just like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit and she's like, it's my son, the bone cover is my son and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> and then she tells recent afterwards and then he's like, what? So it's not just some boy? And he's like, what does he look like? He's like, I'll show you. And it's just like, it's the sweetest little thing. But it's only if they manage to survive. And she, even she's like that. If we manage to survive the whole battle, if we manage to save the night court, if we manage to actually have a future, then maybe this is what my child... And I'm just like, I... I can't, I can't, I can't handle... I don't know. I, I... Her son, their son, he had to be their son. I was so excited about how creepy he was as the little boy in, in a court of mist and fury. And now I'm like, I don't even know what I'm like. I can't even breathe. I can't even breathe. I can't even handle what it is. I just, her son, holy shit. Oh my God. Okay, anyway, we get to the end. And the end battle. And then you're excited because she managed to get the Briaxis, which was freaky being in the side of the library when Hybrid infiltrates Valerius again. It's like, you asshole. And then, so she managed to recruit him to come and fight in the battle. And then she finally managed to get the Bone Carver to come fight in the battle because she finds the Ouroboros and she looks into it. She's the only one who survived to look into it because she actually manages to love herself. And I'm like, Feyre, finally, girl. Finally. Finally, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to realize how fantastic you are. How fan-fucking-tastic of a person you are. And then Reason's like, well, surprise, bitch, I brought the Weaver. And it's just, it, everything you think is shaping up well. You think it's all going to work out. And then it stops working out. Because Hybrid has more troops and they're coming in through the, 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 the thing. And then the uh, Hewn City people are all... Dead, they, they've been completely defeated, and the Autumn Court hasn't decided to show up and help yet, and Miriam and Draken, they couldn't even contact them, and Lucian hasn't shown, poor Lucian left for Elaine, and he didn't even see her, that she looked back at him and almost told him to stop from going, and it's just, I, <sighs> so many close calls and near misses in this thing, and it's just, it's heartbreaking, and beautiful and wonderful and it also leaves you hanging on even after the book is in and even after favor and recent story is all wrapped up and they have all those extra things to do with you you're just like what happens here what happens here what happens here how about this person how about them how about that how about i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know there's so many things that i need to figure out still and it's over it's just over and i have to wait another year but besides that and you get to the final battle it's just there are a lot of pages allotted for that battle and it needs it. So, because they have, they're, first they're going fine, and then Reason's going fine, and then Nesta gets involved because she wants to take down Highburn for turning her into something. And then, oh, and their dad shows up with the queen having convinced her to come over because he wants to do his daughter's right, and each boat of his is named after one of the daughters. And then, and then he dies, and Nesta just like, 
explodes and goes after Hyper, but Cassian's there because Cassian then trying to save Nesta because Nesta can no longer like fire at whatever kind of power she's got in there, fire at him because she's too broken up about it. The her father was just literally murdered right in front of her eyes and then Cassian gets wings cut up and injured and then Ivern's about to kill him and Nesta can't even come around and actually like save him because she's still too distraught and broken and then Elaine comes and stabs him and then Nesta jumps on and like slices his head off and Cassian's okay but he's like Cassie my only regret would be that I didn't get enough to spend time with you and it's just oh my heart my heart I know everything gets more and more intense and you get to see more and more of their relationship and their relationship is about to be over because the book is about to end. <sighs> And then Miriam and Draken show up, having found out that there were issues. And I love Miriam and Draken. Honestly, all the extra good characters, they should have come in earlier. Only because I would have liked to have read about them in the first one when I didn't have that many characters. The second one had its fair share. Throw them in! Why not? I would have loved to got to know Miriam and Draken and Vivian and Callius a little bit earlier. Thank you. Oh, and Helian. Helian, the summer court guy, he pretends to be a bad guy, but he really isn't a bad guy. It might be Lucian's father! Holy fucking shit! Oh my god! <gasps> and then, anyway, I keep getting- I can't- I, t I can't think about the battle without getting off track. So then, the cauldron- Elaine and Nesta can't help with the cauldron, and Amran's like, okay, well, it might be able to be just you and I, which she figures out because Favor got the, um, the Ouroboros, right? And then she brings them over to the cauldron, and she makes Favor touch it, and it turns out that Amran betrayed her because it's not nullifying the cauldron, because- Amran's not saying anything, and then Feyre's like, I'm gonna kill you, you bitch, you traitorous, horrible person. And then she sucks in the cauldron's, like, head or whatever, and she watches what happens to Nesta, and watches what happens to Elaine, and watches her father die, and goes through, and sees Reeson struggling, and then she sees Reeson turn into, like, this fucking dragon thing, and it's like, oh my god! Oh my god! No wonder he doesn't like to always, like, fully, completely yield to shape-shifting, because he turns into a fucking monster, but, like, a beautiful, glorious, wonderful, amazing killer monster, which is exactly what we need right now. Helion has a similar form, but it's like a bird thing, and it just, everybody is in their prime, man, and everything just going to shit, and then Amran betrays her, and then Feyre's like, you're gonna die, and then Amran's like, yeah, I know, this was the only way I could fix it, because you're gonna release me, even though I want to stay Fey, basically, because I can feel things, and I'm gonna miss you guys, and I'm gonna miss Varian, and I don't want to do this, but I have to, and then, so, she, she jumps into the cauldron, and then comes out as this freaky crazy dragon, like even worse, bigger, more powerful, whatever dragon-y thingy, I guess, and then sets fire to all the boats, right? And then you just, you think everything's going well, and then Amran's gonna die, and then she tries, the call, and everything's better, and then the cauldron starts to break, and they defeated Hybern's forces, but the cauldron is still gonna be a horrible, horrible thing, and they still have to break it, and then Feyre's like, I don't have enough power for that, I can't do it on my own, and Reese's like, use my power, and she's like, you're not strong enough, and he's like, I'll try me, but like, yeah, try him, he's gonna die, and he does fucking die, I cried, I cried, it was like, three, the lines of him dead, I don't even know, it wasn't that much, and she starts screaming, and everybody's like, broken all around him, and they don't wanna help him, and then the, the high lords are like, yeah, we can't do the same thing we did to you, and she's like, just fucking test me, guys. You do it. You drop your little sprinkly sunflower seeds on him, and you bring my, my mate, my husband, my high lord back to life, and it just, ah, I broke, I broke, I broke, I shattered, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't, I <gasps> and then they do, and then, and then Tamlin almost does it, and she's like, Tamlin, please come on, because like, you can't trust him to actually give back to the the man who stole his wife and his beloved, and he's like, be happy, Feyre, and I'm just like, <gasps> he chanted you from his spies, and he only got close to Hybern to actually give an edge for the fairy people, but you don't know that, and you don't, not confirmed until the end, and he's like, yeah, just, you go, be happy with your lord, your high lord, and I'll bring him back to life, and I'm just like, yes, man, yes, I've been suffering, and now you're, you're saving me, and then, it gets back and all the High Lords are always going to be angry because she's going to have all the powers because Faerie has all the powers of every single one of them now. And then he's like, don't worry, my power's still on my own. Which actually, it was a serious concern of mine because I did not want the High Lord of the Night Court to be any less powerful or any more powerful. But with other people saying this, like, Reason needs to be the knight. He needs to be the knight. The, the... The night triumphant and to Feyre's stars eternal. That line killed me. That line killed me. And so he comes back and he comes back with all of his own powers and she's like, you 
bastard, horrible person. I hated him. I hated Reason in that moment for making me, putting me through that and for putting favor through that and putting all of them through that. And then, but then the battle ends and Favor and the night people go back and Miriam and Draken are like, come visit. And Tamlin goes off on his own and Lucian has this look about him because Lucian's back and Lucian's ready for business. Like, we have unfinished business. We need to sort this out because they were best friends and they were both, they sort of betrayed each other. And the father's dead, but Nesta and Elaine are like, not okay, but back in the game. And Cassie and Nesta have this thing going on. And Amran, they bring Amran back too, right? Because when, um, when Reason goes back into the culture and then Amran comes out with him, I was like, yes, 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 because I hated the fact that when she died, I was like, I get what you did, girl, I get it, but like, don't do that to me. And then she was back, and she was back as a fate, and now she can, she can be with Varian, guys, my life is like almost complete. And then they bury her father, and they go back to the night court, and then it switches to Reese's perspective. There's only two chapters in the entire series with Reese's perspective, and I really like the way they did that, because I don't like it when it switches people the same way. Like, it's sort of pissing me off for the Throne of Glass series, because there's so many people to keep track of it. I don't mind people keeping track of people, but I don't like it when you switch point of view, so you have so many, so many stories that connect. I like to be one person, because you can feel like you're that one person, and I feel like I'm Feyre, but then occasionally you get this little glimpse into Reese's mind at the end of the books, and you get to see how he's going through all of this, and handling it, and his dynamic with the other guys, and them going in and having a drink, and him like, we cherish, and until then, until we have another issue, we, like, enjoy every heartbeat of it, or cherish it, and I was just, <sighs> it's, all wraps together and when Feyre's talking to him when they're laying in bed one day and she's like I wish I could just have days and days to spend like this with you and he's like we will we will and then you don't think that they will because Reese just fucking died Sarah J Moss how could you do this to me how could you do this to all of us I suffered I seriously suffered I enjoyed it while I was suffering I enjoyed the suffering but I didn't enjoy you killing Reese but then you get to see the beginnings of their new life and that's what I love about books about the finales of books because as much as you don't want the series to end you certainly don't want to feel like your characters have no future and this shows that they had a future this set them up for a future for him and Feyre and she's flying around in lingerie because she's finally mastered using her wings it's just it was a beautiful ending to a beautiful series and a beautiful book and this is what I can't get over and that is why I needed to do these videos because I it's an offload and I am so I have been by the way in a funk a reading slump for three years when I've been trying to get through my TBR file that I mentioned back in the Court of Thrones and Roses video that I'm slightly ashamed of this book this this series here brought me back. This is what has brought me back into reading. I had the book series that started me way back in like elementary school when I was young little child. It got, got me into reading and this is a series that has gotten me back into reading and I will be so forever grateful. Thank you Sarah J Monster even though you made me suffer and you made me hurt and you made me ache and you made me swoon and you made me sigh and you made me all excited and giddy and screaming and rambling really 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 quickly because I know I'm talking really fast now. Thank you for writing this. Thank you, and I will be eternally, like the stars, eternally grateful. So, anyway, that has been my The Aftermath book talks of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Moss, the final one, A Court of Wings and Ruin. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll be doing another one of these videos. This was an offload, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and I will see you next time if there is a next time. So, bye!